Hello, everybody, and welcome to our press conference of I Want You Back. My name is Matthew Hoffman, and I am so excited to be with you guys here today and share with you in this unbelievable film, I Want You Back. How good is this movie? It is just so good, uh, which makes our job <laughs> so easy, but I am obsessed with it. Um, before we get to talk to um, this epic cast and our filmmakers today, I have a little housekeeping uh, that I have to get to. So I just want to let everybody who's watching know that we have two press conferences today. Uh, each will be 20 to 25 minutes, I promise. And then we will have a five minute uh, break. We'll go into the second one. You guys will leave today with a link uh, for this video that you can use for your editorial copy. Think of it kind of as like the best virtual goodie bag ever. That's what I'm going with. Uh, and speaking of the best, I want you back premieres all around the world on February 11th on Prime Video. It will be in 240 countries and territories worldwide. And before our cast and filmmakers go global, they are going to talk with us today, and I am so excited. So without any further ado, a drum roll, please. Thank you. Please welcome the unbelievable Jenny Slate and Manny Jacinto. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Hi! What's up, guys? <laughs> we also yeah. have Isaac Abtaker and Elizabeth Berger. Hey, guys. Hi! <laughs> and last but certainly not least, the one and only Gina Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. Yay! Yeah. What a bit too excited. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this. I am so excited to be with you guys in the lighting we deserve to talk about this. <laughs> Nice. Um, I, I have to be honest, well, before we start, in case this press conference goes off the rails or I screw up, I just want to let you guys know that on Zoom, if anything does happen, I'm just going to glitch like that. So uh, just get ready. That's, that's my plan. Oh. Um, but I have to let you guys know that when after I saw this film, I couldn't think like how I couldn't help but think how refreshing this was for the genre, right? Like the romantic comedy genre, it, it kind of just turned it on. And I feel like rom-coms in the past, like the two leads have less chemistry than a performing arts high school. And like you guys have like just this unbelievable compatibility with everybody. And we root for you individually, but also like as couples. So I wonder for all of you, uh, for the actors, was, did you guys know each other before or were you, is this the first time you met? And if so, what was that process like? And Manny and Jenny, I will start with you. Oh, wow. Well, here we go. <laughs> Wait, ladies <laughs> first. Um, we didn't know each other. No. It was a delight to meet each other Absolutely. and work with each other. I had only met uh, Gina in passing and Charlie in passing and had not met Clark mm, or yeah. Scott. So mm. that's that answer. Um, sort of boring and basic. But what I have to say about it is that when I did meet truly all of these people, it was just like a big yes. It was really, really exciting. It was kind of like for anyone who went to camp, finding out like you got a really good bunk. <laughs> yes. So you're like, we're never gonna go to sleep. We're just never gonna go to sleep. It's gonna be so much fun. And and that's that's what it was like. Yeah, it was actually, it seemed, it was seamless, I feel. Mm -hmm. Like being able to get along and work with each other. We were very open with one another. I feel right off the bat, there wasn't any like, I don't know. It was just, it was so smooth, I think. And I don't know. We were just so happy to work really well. No grumps, no jerks. Exactly. Yes. No a holes. That's right. How dare you? Yes. It's so early, sir. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I need, I need a coffee. Wow. <laughs> Gina, for you. Oh, Jenny's being super modest. She is the most bomb lead ever. She set the tone. Yes to make it such an incredible experience. She That's texted really. me before we started shooting the sweetest text. And I was like, look at this woman go. She was like, I can't <laughs> wait to work with you. She was like, so loving, so kind. I was like, I'm gonna take a note. This is what I'm gonna do in the future. Cause she just opened the door to make me feel so welcome. And Jenny, you're awesome. You need to know that you well, said, Gina. An I incredible love you so much. I love you so much. I miss you so much. I'm sorry I'm not there. It makes me so sad. Um, but yeah, you just set a really remarkable tone. You mm -hmm. made it so we all felt 
wanted and welcomed and needed and inspired and empowered and like you really are special dude oh okay let me just say and I'm, oh, no. i know there are other questions and it's not going to just be this back and forth but i it's that's like an infinity loop because i would say that gina was was leading that and on the first day that she got to set she was working with all of these kids and <laughs> she she was like her it was the scene where she's sort of like handing out costumes and they were asking her questions about how the set worked and she gave every child like so much respect fully answering all of these questions like i was like is she a teacher and then they were like <laughs> rolling and then i forget what the kid's name was but she was like and and like you know what richard i'll tell you more about that in a minute okay let's go and like she was like just <laughs> she was like we are going to come back to your concerns but now we'll make the film i'm a true pro and i'm super nice it was oh really gosh. really cool <laughs> Best class ever. And uh, speaking of like syllabus, I guess, well, did you smell that Emmy award winning segue? Um, Isaac and Elizabeth, uh, you you guys are uh, obviously trained professionals in pulling at our heartstrings. Uh, you, are, you are certified in that department. Of course, you are responsible for This Is Us and Love, Simon. But what? how did I Want You Back come to be? Like, were you always thinking of getting in that genre? And were you inspired by other rom-coms? Yeah, we love romantic comedies and we especially love the classic ones like, you know, the When Harry Met Sally's and the old James L. Brooks movies and, and romantic comedies about real people that feel like they're humans you could be friends with. And so this one, the inkling for this one started with, what if you took a movie like Cruel Intentions, but the people doing the manipulation and the sexual, you know, you know, trickery were just normal people. They weren't these, you know, super elite teenagers, but they were just kind of like regular people you could be friends with. That seems like uh, it's a recipe for fun and disaster. So we kind of went from there. Yeah, and I think it was, it was really important to us that it be a rom-com, but it be one that both men and women would enjoy together. So it was, we wanted it to be so romantic and we wanted it to make you feel, but funny here was so important to us. Funny had to be kind of the guiding light here. Um, so it was just a lot of time being like, what feels silly to us and what makes us laugh? And then how do we assemble the funniest group of people in the world to tell this story? And that kind of, we just sort of went from there and then we just lucked into the greatest group in the world. So uh, it started, like Isaac said, just sort of making ourselves laugh, thinking about these people in these situations and then just kind of grew from that. Uh, um, speaking of growing, um, can we ha suddenly have a wrap? Round of applause for the green uh, big plant in the room. Jenny, <laughs> your war is one for the ages. Uh, as a musical theater boy watching it, I was crying into my Ben and Jerry's. I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> um, so just a virtual round of applause for that. And mm. was that scene as fun for you to make as it was for us to watch? Yeah, it was. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I assume it was fun for you just from your vibe um, and what you're saying about your Ben and Jerry's. Um, but it was fun and it was fun in all of the ways that you like expect and that like it's really fun to sing loudly with a child who is very good at singing and like this this young actor, Little Manny, we yes. called him. His name was Little Manny, Manny. too. Um, he just he was like. He was like Mariah Carey or something. Like he was like, all I want to do is sing. It's my whole life. I just like, I love singing and I'm super good at it. And I was like, well, I'll jump on that vibe. Not that I'm as good as you, but I feel joy when I sing. And and uh, it's really, really fun. No one has ever asked me to sing anything in anything before. And so um, I really jumped at the chance. But as an actor also to have to balance the fact that the character really is very sad when she's walking onto stage and, and very embarrassed and that, um, this truly is a nightmare that many people have that they're like somehow in full hair and makeup and in a play that they have never been cast in. Um, and I just, uh, yeah, it was really wonderful to, to try to hit some sort of a balance while wearing a huge blonde wig. <laughs> <laughs> you you can give that back to me now, but thank you. You're you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, Isaac and Elizabeth, what was it about um, Little Shop of Horrors? Was that is that an emotional choice for you guys, or were the rights just available? Like, why not Fiddler <laughs> or Cat? What, no, what was rights, that about? To get to use Little Shop of Horrors in a movie, you have to write a letter to Alan Menken, who is like you know the god of Disney, oh, wow. um, wow. super super talented. I think he's an egot. 
Uh, and he was so gracious and generous and let us uh, not only use the song, but there's a line in the movie where Jenny misremembers a lyric and sings, suddenly Seymour is going inside me. And so Alan was also kind enough to, to let us tweak tweak his genius. These are all separate phone calls that you have to make yeah. where you're like, what about going inside me? And they're like, all right, sure. You never, when you set out to become a writer, you don't realize the moment you're gonna have to send Alan Menken an email saying, can we can we say going inside me in your, uh, in your show? Uh, but that is another scene. I mean, talk about surpassing your wildest dreams and expectations in terms of the way it came out. I mean, uh, Jenny and Manny's performance in that scene, it just, we've been lucky enough to see this with a few test audiences. There is never not applause at the end of it because mm -hmm. they are just so breathtaking and so brilliant. Um, we can't we can't wait for more people to see them and what exactly. they do. And, and Manny, you had a front row seat to Jenny's performance, which was like, the, I was <laughs> like just the coolest. But I, I have a feeling that a lot of people would love you and your hair, rude by the way, uh, <laughs> to be their drama teacher. So I'm wondering for this role, did you draw on any drama uh, teachers that you've had in the past? And if so, the floor is yours, sir, if you'd like to thank them. <laughs> yeah, do I dig for uh, for any closets? No, I don't. Um, I don't know. It's it was just I just knew that we all I think have this guy that's kind of obsessive over a certain subject or craft. And I just really honed in on that. Um, yeah, almost to to, to like, I I went to school with this guy. I like have this guy as a friend, and I just I knew who this guy was. But thankfully, with Jason and 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 Isaac and Elizabeth, I didn't push it too much. Like we made it, we still made Logan in a more, we gave him, uh, he was more well rounded, and we were able to just give him more than just this obsessive uh, personality, which is always really great to have um and also jenny helped me a lot with trying to discover this guy as well so i don't know but also again going back to the long hair it was it was a lot easier to get into that character with those with those luscious locks i think <laughs> we yeah. all loved it yeah. love, love it. Love any man over 30. <laughs> yeah yeah uh, Nina, uh for you uh your character retreats to what i assume is her uh childhood bedroom in this movie after a breakup without giving too much away and i couldn't help but notice that there was a poster of a nick lachey on the wall uh so um i wonder if we were to go to gina rodriguez childhood bedroom what poster of a teen heartthrob would be up on the wall I didn't have any posters. I had the like glow in the dark stars on my ceiling. <laughs> that was like the max of my like decoration. <laughs> like I wasn't, I didn't have, I would have had salt and pepper if okay. I, yes. if my parents allowed me to like tack things on my wall. Nice. Um, and then I would have had like obscure Latino artists like Olga Pagnon, which you no, know, everybody's like, what are you even saying? She's like the most bomb old, Latina. I no, I shouldn't have called her old. She's an older <laughs> older singer who's like, you know, she's been around for a while and she's just incredible. But I didn't have anything super cool. So I was really excited to jump into that Nick Lachey bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, for everybody, I have to get this question out of the way. Knowing what you now know, would you all accept an invitation to your ex's wedding? And Elizabeth and Isaac, since you are the masterminds of this crazy plot, I will start with you. Elizabeth, <laughs> would you accept <laughs> an, an invitation to your ex's wedding? Um, that is a really great question. It, well, it's one that we talked about, you know, like a lot where we were like, would she go? What do you think? Um, but, you know, I think it depends on the place you're at um, in your life. And I think, yeah, I would go. I, yeah. I see it. Closure. You need closure yeah. is an important an important thing. And what what better way to, to end something than see them go off with someone else? Yeah. And, and, and very drunk. You get, as long as there's an open bar. That's right, my exactly. answer. Yeah. <laughs> As long as there's past appetizers, we're in. This is good. Right. Quiches in a martini and you can do anything. Yes. Uh, Gina, what about you? Would you go? Nah. Nah. <laughs> there's not enough. There's not enough liquor or drugs that are ready for me to do that. I'd just be like, you know what? Good. Peace be with you. I hope you guys last forever. <laughs> yeah. I'm not the biggest fan of weddings anyway. Like, Fair. Fair. And Jenny, what about you? Um. I think it's got to be case by case, but I, I I would land on no. I would probably land on like, it is so um, 
so wonderful of you to invite me and I'm so glad that I I hold meaning in your life and I think you're a wonderful person but you know I just I just have a press junket for I want you to have, and I, I'm just not going to be able to get get out of it yeah yeah right? you give like a return or like you, a reply to the invite saying yeah, you give a reply to do. Yeah, like I'm not confident enough to be like, no, thank you. All right. Like, I think I would be like, I like I'm strong enough to do this, uh, um, but I'm busy is like, yes. you know, I have yeah. to soften it a little bit. <laughs> um, this this film is is such a love letter uh, to to lots of different things, but it's just so wholesome. You walk away just like in love with love again, if that makes sense, after all the twists and turns that you guys you guys take us on. And this movie uh, is releasing at the perfect moment, right before Valentine's Day, right? Like Valentine's Day weekend. And I wonder if you guys could write a Valentine, uh, just a one sentence to audiences throughout the globe who are going to see this on what they can expect from I Want You Back. <laughs> um, I mean, when you said roses are red, yeah. mine was like, roses are red. Violets are blue. If you don't see this movie, it sucks for you. Wow, that's not a Valentine. That's but not I, a Valentine. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Good night, LA. Perfect. <laughs> um, awesome. Um, anybody else have one, or I can move on before we all start? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we're all bursting to do it, but you should. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara Walters at 10 a.m. Here we go. All right. Uh, one of my other questions is, um, you know, we've all had breakups before, right? And this movie deals with the delicate situation of, of grieving and breakups, but does it in a really lovely way and kind of lets everybody know that, like, we're all in this together, right? Like, you don't see, you may not see the behind the scenes, but everyone is, is going through some stuff. So I wonder for everybody, um, is there a official, like, I want you back tip that you had learned, you know, maybe about breaking up or grieving for somebody who is heartbroken maybe at the moment like is there anything you learned from this movie to take away and uh Gina I'll start with you there are more than one person for everybody yeah, yeah. that there's just happiness starts from within and then the person should contribute you shouldn't find your happiness in another person and there's plenty of people out there yeah and for you Isaac uh, I think nowadays with Instagram and everything, it's so easy to compare yourself to other people and feel like you're getting left behind. And that's a big theme of the movie. These two people who are staring down the idea of starting over and wondering, is it too late? But you can't force it. It has to be It has to be your person. And sort of, if not, then then love will come. But you have to you have to wait for the right the right fit. And uh, for you, Elizabeth? Oh boy. I mean, I think the grief from a breakup can feel so all consuming and it really can feel like this is it. This is the rest of my life now is I'm miserable and sad. Um, but time does go on and you will shower again and fix your makeup again <laughs> and change your clothes. Um, it, it, yeah, time, time heals and, and there is light, I think, even after the worst of breakups. Yeah. And, and for you, Jenny? Um, you know, uh, I think that looking back on it, um, you know, like there's a really funny breakup montage at the start of this film and, uh, kind of piggybacking on what Elizabeth said, like that time, that grief, um, that feels like it will last forever, but it's actually just like a short moment of detox before you can back, get back to like the equilibrium that exists in, in solitude and like who you are when you're just making friends with someone and you're not trying to like be hot for them. I think that's how um, Emma, my character, and Charlie's character, Peter, meet. Like they're both sad, but they're also not trying to be anything but themselves and and kind of their worst selves in a way. Like their, their most hurting self, their most desperate selves. and. Um, that's the most important part. There is a there is a gift in the in the grief. Not that, that I'd go looking for it. <laughs> that was so beautiful, but there is, and like you're you're so right, and that's that's beautiful. Uh, and for you, Manny, man, everybody's answers are so eloquent. I was gonna be like, <laughs> go back to your Valentine if you'd you like. Write another threatening <laughs> Valentine. <Yeah. laughs> be He's like, very vengeful, is what I found out. Yeah, yeah this is, I'm learning a lot during this whole junket about myself and my relationships that I need to talk about to to my therapist about. But anyways. Um, <laughs> 
I, uh, I mean, the first thing that I can think of is, you know, it's okay to spend time alone uh, sometimes and, and to like, to grow a little bit and to really find yourself before you find somebody else to love you. Because yeah, at the end of the day, I think you need to love yourself before somebody else can, can give you that love that you uh, truly deserve. Uh, yeah. um, also and, that and um, threesomes aren't for everybody. They're not, <laughs> you know? They're not. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're um, not. Um, uh, I speak of love. I love you all so much. We're going to wrap up uh, really, really quick. But before we do, I have one last question. There is an epic karaoke scene in this movie without giving anything away if somebody hasn't seen it yet. Uh, but I, since I am a hard hitting journalist, I have to know, what is your guys' go-to karaoke song? Manny, I will start with you. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. I like a good uh, No Diggity by Black Street. Wow, that's mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. No, yeah. No, doubt. no doubt. Yeah, <laughs> so, right. a mix of rapping, some, yeah, some funky grooves and singing, yeah. Nice. And for you, Jenny? Yeah. Um, I'm a tie between I'm so excited by the Pointer Sisters and I just can't wait to be King, which is, of course, from The Lion King. Amazing. <laughs> God, I love you guys so much. Uh, and for you, Elizabeth. Oh, uh, I'm not brave enough to do karaoke, but when I practice it alone, it would be it would be <laughs> Valerie by Amy Winehouse. There's a brilliant rendition oh. that I do all by myself that no one will ever hear, but I'm it's pretty good. <laughs> okay. And for you, Isaac? Uh, definitely semi charmed life by third eye blind. Of Hands course. down. Oh, wow. 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 You guys are giving me the whole genre, like every genre. This is amazing. <laughs> you know, let's end it on a high note. I'm a big like don't stop believing by journey, mm. you know, or going straight to like Adele. Hello. Oh yeah. Ooh. I do that too for myself. <laughs> I'm like you, Elizabeth. This is all for myself. And I sound <laughs> amazing alone. Like, you know. <laughs> Well, speaking, speaking of amazing, you guys are truly amazing in this. Every single one of you. Um, this film is is so fresh. It's so fun, and it's so lovely, and it just makes everybody think. And I am sending you all the biggest congratulations. Uh, uh, thank you guys so much for this. Uh, this press conference, press conference one, is officially over, guys. I have to break up with you. I'm so sorry. Uh, I know it's it's the breakup. Uh, it's happening. But thank you guys so much uh, for talking with us today, and for everybody who's watching. Uh, we're going to take a five minute break and then we're going to go into press conference number two. Thank you guys so much. You are the best. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you.